You know, we are so blessed to have Melissa. I don't know if you guys were listening to that, but I just wanted her to continue playing for the, for the next hour, but I think you'd, uh, you probably want to hear some other things today. Um, welcome to First Baptist Church Sun Lakes. And uh, I know it's been a difficult uh, 24 hours for most of us at this time. That's why I'm wearing the red, white, and blue today in honor. Uh, and uh, I, I hope that those that are still injured will survive. And I thank the Lord for uh, his blessing that uh, we didn't have an assassination yesterday Amen. of a political leader. And Steve will bring some other things out on that later. Uh, for announcements today, I wanted to remind, for those of you that haven't participated in a drive-through prayer, we'd love to have you out there uh, just a little before 7 on Monday morning right here, right there in the, in the front of the church. And uh, uh, as we minister to those people that need prayer that are driving by, you know, I'd love to see some more of you out there. Pardon me? Oh, that's true, but it's a special gift when people who are going to work or driving by can come by and have somebody pray for them. And of course, members of our church are welcome between seven and nine. Come on by and we will pray for you too, as we do for all of us that are in drive through prayer. Oh. <laughs> we have a young man talking back there. Uh, the other thing to remind everybody about is Tuesday morning for the men, we have our band of brothers at 9 o'clock uh, here in at the church, and we're in the middle of Colossians, and what an amazing book it is. Uh, on the 16th, we have Women's Connect, and uh, the, uh, any other announcements besides Sandra's? Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Sandra Foss to come up and talk to us a little bit about what's happening this year. Okay. Am I on? Ah, yes. Good morning, I'm Sandra. For those of you who do not know me, I want to share with you a mid-year report on Operation Christmas Child. Uh, for those who know that we have uh, item of the month and that we've been posting all along what our items are and we have a current list that looks just like this that's posted in multiple locations around the church including in two, lo two or three locations out in the foyer. We are at 1,715 items year to date that have been given. And I, that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. And I am very grateful for how we have been receiving these items. I have been sensitive, however, that it hasn't been exactly like Christmas every Monday morning. At, since we started this year. And the 1,715 items does include the fact that we have over uh, 86 dresses out currently being sewn. And these are the little dresses that we had uh, six or seven that were returned this morning. So they're being sewn actively. And I wanted to share those with you again. We also have over 132 t-shirts that we have bought. None of these items were bought at this time last year. So we are a little behind, even though we're only about 100 items behind. But I want to encourage you that the biggest items that we have a need for right now are plentiful and they're available, and they're at the, bright, the best price of the year, and that is school supplies. We still need lots of rulers and ra erasers and pencil sharpeners and crayons. We only have like 36 crayon packages. So these are the items that we are in most need of right now. Our display is here. Yes. Um, the crayons can be either the Crayola or the, the 
uh, the I have often looked and wanted the eight count, but they're not as available this year as we've had in previous years. We have a lot of the 24s, and depending on how many more that come into us, if we need to, as we did last year, we'll break the 24 counts into three eight counts and put them into snack bags and put them in the boxes. So we make them go as far as we have, uh, have to with our numbers, and we're grateful for every one we have. So I look, hope that you'll be on the uh, lookout for all of these school supplies that need to be uh, still coming on in because that's the greatest item that we have a need for with that spans the whole age group of children that we provide for. Um, I want to also ask you that uh, in the next two weeks because the report of 1,815 items at the end of July was just that. It was at the end of July. We're at the midpoint of July. And so there's still two Sundays remaining, and so we'd love to exceed the 1,815 by the end of the month, and then we will have exceeded where we are year to date last year. So I do that to share with you so that we'll get ahead of it and we'll be there. Because I just received a word on Thursday that Risen Savior was so impressed last year with the number of boxes that First Baptist Sun Lakes delivered to them to send to the distributions network. They ordered boxes that exceeded whatever number they normally have, and they were awarded 100 free boxes from Operation Christmas Child, and they want to donate them to us. So we have 100 free boxes coming to us in the near future, so thank you for how you made it possible last year and how excited we are for this coming year as well. But the most important thing I'd like you to do is to pray. Pray already for the, us to be able to fill these boxes for the children and pray for the children who receive them that the love of Jesus will shine forth through all of them. And one last announcement I'll make is I heard Irene and I uh, call out as we were chatting just before the service, there's no games this Tuesday morning. So she'll be calling folks and sharing that as well. So spread the word. If your usual, usual Tuesday morning is to share the games with the ladies, we won't have games on Tuesday of this week. So thank you all. And on the ESL, I'll let Dave maybe share that if he will. Also, um, we are advertising and promoting a new Bible study class, English as a Second Language, using the Bible as the text. If you know anyone who uh, would benefit from taking this class, who's, who, whose primary language is another language, is another mother tongue, not English, and they would benefit by learning some of the uh, some of the idiomatic expressions of English and some of the, the, the different meanings and forms of English by reading the Bible, that's what we want to do because we want to connect their hearts to God's heart. So be on the lookout for how that's promoted. Yes, Travis Owens. No, we're, this is for people who are, who, who do not have a, a good grip on Spanish. Yeah. But it's also for difficult people who don't know how to Yeah, if, you, if there's English, yeah, if there's English speaking people that have difficult with the language, um, you, you come on to this class, okay? Be looking for the promotion on that. It's, it was in the slides this morning. It'll also be promoted through different print uh, ads. Dave? Uh, Pam Workman is, uh, my wife, is the one that's coordinating the ESL. So if you have any questions, please ask her. Uh, she's had the, the, uh, the pleasure of ordering different types of Bibles uh, for ESL based on different grade levels. And uh, it's, uh, it's really a joy to read 
uh, some of the simplified versions of the Bible. And for those that have difficulty with English, uh, she can give you some information about a Bible that may make it easier for you to, to, to handle. Uh, and uh, I, I, I had a chance to, to teach my son uh, Proverbs many, many, many years ago. And uh, I was able to use the Good News Bible. I don't know if any of you remember that, but it had, it had some great words in there that uh, was almost like written like Hemingway, but it was, uh, uh, made some good points. Like instead of saying, you're a fool if you do this, it would say, you're stupid if you do this. <laughs> and so uh, he really understood that as a, as a third grader, you know? Thank you. And oh, one other thing. For operation uh, that Sandra was talking about. If you've ever read any of the comments that come back from those kids that get those boxes, it is amazing how much they, that may be the biggest present they get all year long in the countries that, that they're in. And they, it means so much to have that little purse or that crayon set or a, a ruler or uh, pencils and, and, and different things and a flashlight. I mean, it's just amazing. Okay. Has anybody, any other announcements? We're all good? Okay. We have an opportunity to worship the Lord this morning. So let us all rise up to sing Christ receiveth sinful man, hymn number 471.
the move. Let me say it again, God is on the move. He can't be stopped. He is above all, and he is working his purposes out on the earth as he dictates, not as man does. So we pray this morning that we can intercede not only for our own church members, but also for our nation. Indeed, even for our political leaders, one whom just yesterday had an assassination attempt on his life. I'd like to read a a statement from his website who says, thank you to everyone for your thoughts and prayers yesterday, as it was God alone who prevented the unthinkable from happening. We will fear not, but instead remain resilient in our faith and defiant in the face of wickedness. Perhaps, perhaps, I believe that, that, uh, that God's working in and through people's lives. And I've seen some changes in hearts for both Democrats and Republicans. I've seen people try to, to work to try to bring people together. But perhaps yesterday was a come to Jesus moment for somebody. And perhaps we might see that vented through his speeches in the future. Lord, we do lift him up to you. We pray for Donald Trump. We pray that you would bring healing to him, both emotional and physical. We thank you for sparing his life. We thank you, Father, for how there were people there that uh, would respond quickly to such events. Lord, we pray that your spirit would push back evil in all its forms. Lord, that this troubled young man, 20 years old, who breathed his last having done a deed that was, uh, uh, Lord, just uh, absolutely horrible. How confused and how totally desperate he must have been. And so, Father, I just pray that you would bring sanity to our world, to our nation. Sanity to, Father, public discourse. Sanity, Lord, to us that we can respect each other's views and still be different have di- and still remain uh, in our differing views. Lord, we pray that you would unite a nation by sweeping across this nation for a great awakening. We pray, Lord, that many souls would be awakened to the joy of the Lord We pray, Father, that many souls would be added to your kingdom. We pray, dear Lord, that people across this nation would arise and see the value of uniting with the saints who join together in worship every Sunday so that it would reverse the trend of churches shrinking and even closing their doors, but that people would begin rushing to the house of the Lord that they can say once again, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Do that, Father, in our day. We want to see it happen. Lord, give us hearts that will love others. Give us minds that will understand the pain that others carry. Give us wisdom to understand how to communicate effectively with others. And make this nation one. For it's in your holy name we pray, Lord. Amen. In your prayers, I hope that you'll continue, please, to uh, remember Kay Wingert's family, as well as Alan Miller, Keith Shahan and his wife, Bob Burns, and um, Miss Dottie Boyd. Um, Continue to please remember Bob Dykstra um, and others who are shut-ins. When you receive that prayer list each Thursday or Wednesday, depending on when Diane sends it out, please make sure that you specially um, give considerable time for our shut-ins. And if you have a moment, if you have a moment that you can go to your directory and look up their name and look up their phone number and call them on the phone and say, I just want you to know that I'm thinking of you today. I'm praying for you. And just to encourage them, it will mean the world to them. And anyone that wants to join me in visitation, you just call me and we, we can work it out, okay? 
God bless you all. It's so good to, to see you today. Pray for our, our fellow saints. Pray for our nation. Trust God in how he's going to write the story. If you're visiting with us today, you are our honored guest. If you're visiting us for the first time, please fill out this yellow card and, and uh, give it to one of the ushers at the, as we close, or just leave it on the, t on the visitor's table. If you come back, I will give you a gift certificate to, uh, to, to treat you to a Subway sandwich. So if you're visiting with us and would like that, just fill this out, and we can see what we can do for you, okay? I want to just, uh, I hope he doesn't mind me doing this, but I just want to proclaim the goodness of God. We have a church member here. We have two church members here. One who had an operation several months ago because he had tremors in his hand. And, and he, had the, he had this operation where they focus, uh, is, it, is it called microwaves? Ultrasound. And, and, and they, can I say your name? And so Bob Jones had the operation several months ago, and he showed me, he stuck his hand out, and it was just, he, he had tremors before, but he stuck his hand out and said, look at that. And his hand was much more still than mine is right now. Mine's shaking a little bit. But, but uh, the same operation was done this past week for Bob Wright. And he had severe tremors in his, in his hands. And so they can only do one side at a time. And so they did it for his right side, and it's amazing. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Bob can now hold his hand out. He can brush his teeth without <laughs> brushing his face. He can, he can drink a cup of, co cup of coffee. He can sign his name on a check. God is good. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, God, for, for such, for such uh, wonderful advances. Brother Dave? Oh, <laughs> Pastor Steve, you can remain seated as we sing. Um, we're going to be going to, I had a piece of paper over here, it's right here. There we go. And, uh, and so I'm going to play the first part of this before Melissa comes in. And... Uh, and you just join me. It's Amazing Grace. All of you know Amazing Grace, but it's just a little bit different. It, it has a different chorus that we've attached to it, but we're not going to sing the chorus until after two verses. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I got it now. Twas blind, but now I see. Twas grace, twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear.
next song is He Touched Me, hymn number 628. president was touched in a very special way yesterday. And for all of you that don't know, Betty has been singing with me, and she is Melissa, our very good friends at ASU, both studying for masters and doctorates and all these other things, and uh, they are a real joy to have here in our church. Amen. God bless them both. Good morning, church. Good morning. God bless you all. And you. Yes. I'm going to ask you all to stand if you can. If you can't, you may remain seated for the scripture reading. And our scripture reading for this morning is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, starting from verse 14 to 21, Acts 2, 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Israel, let this be known to you, and heed my words. For these are not drunken, as you supposed, since, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. 
And on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'll read that last verse again. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall what? Be, be saved. saved. Thanks be to God. And may God hear his prayer. Uh, scripture. You may be seated. I'm going to ask the congregation here this morning to pray for our nation. The only person who can save our nation and some other parts of the world is God. When the Israelites needed help from God, they raised their voices and God heard them. So I want us to raise our voices this morning and ask God to bring peace, love, and happiness in our nation, yes. especially what's going on these days. We don't know. God alone knows what's going on. So let us ask God to bring peace, love, and happiness. So let us bow our heads. You can pray aloud, or you can just pray in your hearts. Let us pray. Everybody say amen or the loudest way you can. Amen. amen. Lord, bring peace to our nation. Amen. Bring happiness. Bring love. Harmony among the people of this nation. Yes. Bless our young children, O oh Lord. Change their hearts. I pray for our leaders of this nation. Touch each and every one this morning. Bring love into their hearts. Bring peace not only in America, but around the world. This I pray in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. And let the congregation say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Linda. We can be resolute in knowing that God has not been displaced from his throne, that he works in the events of mankind, and that even from the events of yesterday, God has not been shaken. He is working his purposes out for a time when Jesus will return to this earth. He's coming back. Jesus is coming back, and, and we are to be prepared for that return. And I think holy, holy, holy is such a wonderful song that can reorient us to the power and might and majesty and supremacy of God Almighty. And it's he and he alone that we give our allegiance and our heart to. We pray for our country. We pray for Donald Trump. We pray for Joe Biden. We pray for the Republicans and the Democrats. And we pray that evil would be scattered and that righteousness would be exalted. We're in a series on Acts, which I call the New Covenant Emerging. The New Testament church was being birthed. It's the New Covenant church that, that Jesus described to Peter when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said that heaven and earth did not reveal such to you, but the Holy Spirit did. My Father revealed that to you. And upon that rock, the rock of your faith, the rock of faith and, and solid commitment and resolve to the God of heaven, will I build my church. That's what Jesus told Peter. Did I say Paul? I'm sorry. That's what Jesus told Peter. Acts has every indication of being a commissioned work by a man named Theophilus, which translated means friend of God. Theophilus was likely a high-ranking Roman official, and he had both the authority and funding to commission Luke's investigations for this written record that we call the book of Acts, which also included the book of Luke, by the way. And they were melded together. Today's text gives Luke's account of the birthday of the first century church. The birthday of the first century church. It's the first of three messages revealing the church's birthday. Last week we saw how a mighty rushing wind came through the upper room. Ruach. You remember that Hebrew word? Ruach. Came rushing through the room. It was something any Jew would have recognized. How do I know this? Well, consider the biblical evidence of the wind. Exodus 10. Well, let me let, before I go to Exodus 10, let's go to Genesis 8, when God brought a wind throughout the earth to bring the water into submission. Interesting phrase, isn't it? He used the wind to bring the water into submission. Exodus 10, when Moses used his staff to invite God's power for bringing in the locusts by a great wind. And then again, using a great wind to blow them all out. Exodus 14. Moses used his staff, which brought a mighty wind that separated the great waters of the Red Sea. Numbers 11, when God brought quail into the camp by way of a great wind. Jonah 1.4, when God sent a great wind to bring a tempest to the ship on which Jonah was seeking to flee from God's presence. But you can't flee from the Lord. That great wind is the presence of the Holy Spirit. In Ezekiel 13, describing, it describes how a wind will play a part in the last days. It's also reiterated in Daniel chapter 7, verse 2. Psalm 135, 7 
says that God brings forth the wind from his treasuries. Jeremiah 10, 13 expresses the same sentiment. His arsenal. The wind is part of God's arsenal. John 3, 8, 3, 8, Jesus teaches, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So is everyone, and he, Jesus said, so is everyone. In other words, just like the wind, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Interesting comparison. In other words, we don't know where our life is going. Why? Because we're going to let God lead it. We live by faith, not by sight. So like the wind, we are driven by the Spirit of God. We don't know where it's going to lead us. We don't know how the story is going to be written. For some of us, the story is written that we're going to see love again after our first mates have passed away. There's several of you in this room who are like that. For some of us, like me, it's being in a place that is full of debauchery and darkness and God taking me out of it and putting me in his marvelous light. For some of us, it's taking us to the edge of ourselves and we have no idea what tomorrow will hold, only for him to bring us to the other side. And then for some of us in this room, as we grow closer to that time, we understand what how saving grace led us to living grace and is leading us to dying grace. On this day, we saw that Brother William read that Peter stood up with the 11. He raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Peter took the lead. Peter was a leader in and of himself. Sometimes he did it in his early years, putting his foot in his mouth, but he nevertheless was one who, was, who took first place. He said, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, he was inclusive. You hear about this inclusiveness thing? Well, Peter was inclusive right here. He said, you fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. What's he trying to explain? The Ruach. The sudden blow of the wind and also how people started speaking in languages that they knew nothing about. These unschooled men from Galilee could, were, were, were speaking in tongues and people were hearing it in their own language. There was a great miracle that happened that day. So first, Peter dismissed their presuppositions. He called attention to the time. Look at this. He says this. Let me explain to you this to you. Listen carefully to what I'm saying. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. In other words, people who still are, are working their hangover from last night don't get up and get drunk in the morning, unless they really have a bad case of it. But most people don't get drunk at 9 a.m. And, and he's making an obvious observation through that. So he dismissed their presuppositions, calling attention to the time. It was only 9 a.m. Then he calls their attention to the sacred texts because any good Jew is going to recognize the sacred texts. That's why, my friends, we encourage you to be in Bible study. That's why, my friends, we encourage you to study privately the Bible. That's why, my brothers and sisters, we encourage you to own a Bible and don't just put it on, a, on your nightstand or on a shelf. Open the Bible and read it. That's why, my friends, if you can't read it, order one of those audio versions of the Bible so you can listen to it. Because the Word of God is perfect in every way, and it's going to last forever. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word will last forever. He dismissed, Peter dismissed their presuppositions. And then he declared their own prophecy found in the sacred text, Joel chapter 2. Let me read it to you. I'm going to start, I'm going to go back and reread what, what William read. He says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams, even on my servants, both men and women. That's a pretty important phrase. Both men and women, I will pour out my spirit 
in those days, and they will prophesy. They will prophesy, men and women. Pretty powerful. Now, it's not talking about the structure of the church here. It's talking about people who've given that gift of prophecy through the Holy Spirit who are able to stand and testify in the world, in the domain of the world. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. He declared their own prophecy from Joel. He said the spirit will be poured out. He said male and female will prophesy. He said wonders will be in the heaven. He said there will be signs on earth. Let me just share with you something. The room was filled with the wind. It describes that in this chapter. And then it says that the Christians were filled with the Holy Spirit. The room was filled, the Christians were filled. Why were they filled? It says Pentecost was, it was so that Pentecost would be fulfilled. The room was filled, the Christians were filled, so that Pentecost would be fulfilled. Let me tell you a little bit about Pentecost. Simple Rusthai, the rushing wind that happened on Pentecost. For 1,500 years it had come and gone, pointing to Jesus Christ, always falling on the first day of the week, symbolizing the end of the law in welcoming in the new age of grace. The Pente- Pentecost was fulfilled, meaning it was, it was fully come. For 1,500 years they had been waiting and it was fully come. In fact, when you look at the first part of chapter 2, it says, when the day of Pentecost came, it literally translates, during the arriving. It's in the, it's in the present infinitive form, middle voice, which can also mean passive voice. There, this, it's significant. Why? Because it's continuing in its action. It's present and continuing. What does that mean for us today? The Holy Spirit is here among us. Jesus is here among us. Oh, Lord, I wish you would just blow through this place. I just, it would be just so phenomenal. Within this very room, all these flags would fall down from air, blowing them all over the place. and and, And our hairs would all get messed up because the wind would be so strong. Wouldn't it be wonderful? But not just the wind, I pray that something would move in our hearts. Moving our hearts. Peter dismissed their presuppositions. He declared their own prophecy. He ended declaring their prophecies with a statement. But before he did, when as he was as he was revealing the 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 old sacred text, he was revealing things that were not familiar. I mean, they were familiar with the text, but they weren't familiar with the practice. Some of you are familiar with the text and you're not familiar with the practice. What is the practice? Well, we practice holiness. I didn't recognize the practice of holiness for years. I didn't understand it. We practice the the exercise of prayer. Many of us in here don't understand the practice of prayer. All we know how to pray is, Lord, thank you for this food. In Jesus' name we, say, we pray, amen. Prayer is so much more. We practice the discipline of walking a righteous and holy life. We practice forgiveness. And look what it says here. He says he'll pour out his spirit on all people in the last days. 
So why, aren't, why isn't everyone saved if God's going to pour his spirit out on all people? Because some people's hearts are hard as rock. And what this is saying is that God wants everyone to come to him. He's going to pour his spirit out on everyone, and Jesus is going to be knocking on the door of their heart. He's going to say, I'm, I'm here. I'm knocking. Will you let me in? But those with hard hearts don't let him in. And then it says this. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. <laughs> the sons and daughters. Those were the ones who had been taught to only speak if spoken to. And all of a sudden, they're supposed to open their mouths and proclaim the glories of God. It was pretty significant in their culture. The children were not supposed to speak, even if they were grown. Only the elderly. And then it says, the young men would see visions. Well, that's pretty common for a lot of young men. In other words, in the sense that they have dreams, you know. Oh, you're a dreamer. You're a dreamer. Well, I got these big dreams for my life. I remember when I was young, I had these big dreams for my life. Right? A dream and a vision are a little different. A vision is a path that God gives one that shows his glory. And it can also show a young man or woman how God is moving on the earth so that he gives them words of wisdom to say what Peter said. Let me read it to you again. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. But not only young men, but also old men. Old men would dream dreams. Well, all of us have dreams. We have dreams of, a, of, of, of all kinds of things as we're growing through life. But here, he's talking about the dreams that lead us to heaven. He's talking about the dreams of God speaking to you in a dream. He's talking about the dreams that are shown in Scripture. People who God spoke to in their dream. He spoke to Joseph. He spoke to Daniel. He spoke to some of the prophets. He even spoke to some national leaders in their dreams. That's the kind of dream that Peter is talking about. That old men will dream dreams where God is going to speak to them and say, look, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be wonders in the heavens above, and there's going to be signs on the earth below, and there's going to be blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun's going to be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day. I love that it's, he gives all this terrible description, and then he ends it with, before the great and glorious day. <laughs> Not many of us would think it's going to be great and glorious when we see that there's going to be wonders in heaven, signs on earth, blood and fire, and billows of smoke, and the sun's going to be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. We don't see that as a great and glorious day, but guess who does? God does. Because it's preparing the earth is preparing all creation. Indeed, it's preparing all of the universe for the great and glorious day when Jesus will return. When he will come, the trump of the Lord will, will sound and he will come bursting through the clouds. It's going to be a great and glorious day. But all of that that precedes it prepares our minds and our hearts for it. Because we'll be trembling so with the awesome things that are going on on earth, the, the troubling things that are going on on earth, the things that will, that will trouble our spirit. And we'll say, oh God, when will you bring an end to this? Oh God, what will be our salvation? Oh God, when can we see you deliver us? And that's the day when Jesus comes bursting through. 
Don't you see hearts and minds will be ready to welcome him when that day comes. And then, and then when all the hearts are ready and all the minds are open, it says, and Peter spoke saying this, and everyone, not just the Jews, not just the Greeks, not just the Turks, not just the Parthians or Parthians or the Medes or the Elamites or the Cappadocians, not just an exclusive group of people, but anyone and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of the Lord. No other name but the name of Jesus is worthy of glory and worthy of honor and worthy of worship and all praise. He's the name. He is coming back, and it's guaranteed. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Instead, look to the day. And when you get around people whose hearts are troubled, you just say, God's preparing us for that wonderful, wonderful day. If there's five words that I could leave with you today, Five words that you can tell your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Here they are. And we have, a young, we have a young lady here in our midst today. We have a, ch a child here in our midst. And so listen to this. Here's five words that come right out of the Scripture today. And it's these. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Dear Lord, we pray believing that promise because if our sons and daughters will prophesy that means that you lord are guaranteeing another generation you O oh lord are are bringing in and ushering in a new generation of believers lord raise them up to prophesy let us not get in their way may your word be fulfilled where every T is crossed and every I is dotted. And that we would fall beneath the authority of it. For it's in your holy name we pray. And for your sake. Amen. As we sing our last song today, there is a Redeemer. I hope as you sing it that, that you sing it with a little bit different understanding that you're singing it with the understanding that, that our Redeemer is coming and, his, and, and the time is drawing close for it. Don't think that God is lax as some people see laxness. For a day to the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is to a day. He's coming back soon. May God fulfill his word. Brother Dave. One of the great joys is realizing that you've been redeemed. And some of you don't remember what it was like years and years ago when you used to get those stamps and you'd redeem your, your blue books and you'd buy your, your uh, things at the, at, at the different stores. But we have been redeemed. All of our sin has been cast away as far as the east is to the west. But let's sing together. Let's. Stand up and sing, There is a Redeemer, hymn number 279. Forgiving us your son. 
church, I hope today that you know that God keeps his promises, that he is going to empower us and the spirit is present and the spirit is working and God is working his purposes out. I hope you'll pray for William and Linda Clay. His brother passed away a week ago today. The funeral is starting in, is it in Africa? In Africa today. And it, so in other words, it started six to eight hours ago and, and uh, it lasts for seven days, seven days. His brother was 85 years old. So we pray, William, for you and Linda, that your family would know God's comfort, that God would walk with you through these days, and that he would, more than anything, energize you in your faith to know that there'll be a blessed reunion one day. We have tickets here for this week that you can get a great meal in downtown Phoenix. If you want them, they're right up here. It's for the Gideon International Convention. Paul wrote in Corinthians, he said, Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith. Be of courage, be strong. Do everything out of love. May God bless you this week. May you walk in his spirit. May God give you the awareness of what's going on around you and give you the wisdom of the words that will come from your mouth. God bless you all. Have a great week.